Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to the series Real-Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be looking at sampling. So obviously we're interested in capturing audio from um, an external microphone when we're talking about sampling. And so we will start by adding an array where we're going to store um, our data. I'm going to call this array audio buffer, no, actually audio data, let's call it audio data. Now its size will depend on how big um, a recording time we want. For the purposes of this demonstration I'll just um, record one second of sound and I'm currently at um, a sample rate of 44,100 um, samples per second so that's the size of our array. So there's our array for storing our audio data. We need to get um, audio in. I use the analog to digital converter which in my case is connected to um, my microphone. Um, I'll need to add some gain control uh, so I can get the level of my microphone to an appropriate level to do um, a decent audio recording. And so we'll put a volume control in for that. I'll specify that lowest volume we zero, maybe up to three times should be plenty. All right, so that will get amplified um, or reduced as required by that volume control. Um, the important object in order to get the audio data into the array will be the tab write um, function. And we're going to write that data into the audio, oops, audio data buffer. So that will go in like so. Um, it's convenient I've found to try and see the audio level of your microphone input um, to save time recording and finding that it's not all that great. So fortunately in PD we have the VU meter object uh, which we can use for that purpose. Um, in order to send to the VU meter, we use um, an envelope follower function to get the level of the signal. Um, we need to subtract some value from it and then pass it in. So now as I turn the gain up, you can see that um, as I speak, the audio level um, is shown in the VU meter. If we just keep raising that until we get um, a signal which is getting to, whoops, probably a little bit too high, so let's pull it back. That doesn't look too bad um, at all as an audio signal. All right, so now what we need to do is provide um, sort of a record process. So the tab right can take uh, messages um, to start grabbing that audio data and also to stop grabbing that audio data. Um, in order to make this so it just runs for a one second um, duration, I'm going to use a bang and then a trigger object. So we'll start by banging the start object and then we want to bang the stop object a little bit later um, in order to bring in the little bit later, we'll use a delay object and we'll delay it by a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, which is the duration of we can fit in our audio data buffer. All right, we should be ready to record. Let's give it a go. Test one, two. There we go. So we get test one. If we don't like it, we can just write it again. Hello there. Testing. This is a recording. Um, anyway, we can go on and on with that. So there's our sampling. Um, we want to play that back. In order to play it back, um, we can use the tab read object. Again, we need to specify the buffer name, the array that we're reading from. We can send that out 
to the deck so we can hear it. And we need to provide um, a ramp through that um, audio data from zero value to the end in order to see it. So we'll use the V-line object to create that ramp and we'll pass it arguments. We're going to start at uh, the zeroth sample, the very first one. We're going to go through to the end and we're going to take a thousand milliseconds to do that. So that's all good. So now we should be able to play that back. This is a record. This is a record. This is a record. Okay, so if we re-record it, hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Um, so we're able to sample and we're able to play back. What we'd also probably want to be able to do to use this as a sampler is to write this audio data to a file so that we can save it for later use or for use in some other patch. Um, in order to do that, we can use the write sf um, object um, that will write the audio data out to a file so we can pass the audio data to it. Um, similarly, it needs a few commands. Um, the first uh, command that it requires is to open um, a file. I might call it, for example, samp. Dot wave, so it's going to be a wave file. We can pass that message to the right SF object. Um, it will also need a command to start writing that file once it's been opened, and it will also need a command to stop writing to that file once all of the data has been written. Um, so now we need a way to make sure that all of these um, commands are sent, all these messages are sent to the right SF in the appropriate order. Um, so we need use a trigger um, with three different bang outlets in order, and we're going to bang that trigger to start the saving process. So uh, the first thing that needs to happen is to open the sound file. The second thing that needs to happen is to start the sound file and the third thing that needs to happen is to trigger the audio playback so that it gets written um, and we also need to stop it. Again we will use the delay object to so say after a thousand milliseconds from when we started it we will stop it. Um, and so now if we go bang. hello there so that played and it created um, an audio file uh, let's see if I can show you that audio file um, zap, there it is play it back hello there um, in the operating system so there we have it we've been able to record sample our audio input play it back um, and write it out as an audio file. See you in another video.